Welcome back, and you are tuned into the Mid Morning Talk Show with myself, Nafisa Dango, where we're inspiring you into many different places and spaces, but better ones, of course, and educating you about things that are pertinent to your everyday life. I'm talking about that. We're talking about empowerment in many directions, and of course, there's not a better place and time than this month, Women's Month. Um, the Association of Muslim Accountants and Lawyers, SA, in partnership with Al Baraka Bank, are cel celebrating the success of women and their topic is empowered women empower women and nurturing the next generation which i think is absolutely phenomenal um, and joining me on the line i have munira osman haider and she's the facilitator she's going to be joining me and telling us more about this assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh shukra nafisa for having us on the show this morning um, I think we're so honored to have you on the show, especially um, during such a special month. I mean, it is Women's Month. It's a month where we bring topics that women face to the fore every single day. But, you know, as you know, the show also pens on the word um, empowerment, um, upliftment and sustainability. And I think that's what it's all about. So talk to us about why you decided to have this particular webinar of Amal and, and how did this come to the fore? Well, it's, uh, as you said in the beginning, um, it is Women's Month. On the 9th of August, we did celebrate Women's Day and this entire month in a year of 12 months is set aside for us to do various things in order to honor, in order to celebrate and in order to empower women. And Amal felt that it also needed to, in partnership with Albaraka Bank to also do something um, in the honor and celebration of women. And when we were planning this webinar, uh, we were thinking about what is it exactly that we would like to do? You know, very mm -hmm. often all we hear about are these are the problems that women face and these are the challenges that women face. And it seems like all women ever do is brace their challenges, you know. And mm -hmm. we thought, well, yes, they do do that. They, they, they definitely have many, many challenges that they have to meet along the way. But we wanted to share success stories and we wanted to share with women and thereby empowering them that yes, you do face challenges, but look, you can do this. And you can do this if you are empowered, if you believe in yourself, if you have the confidence and how do you get to that point? Well, let us learn lessons from others in our community, from our history, uh, from the national history, all of that, um, you know, so that's how we actually came about with this particular topic uh, for the webinar. I think it's absolutely phenomenal because the thing is, um, this is the whole idea of, 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 of my show here as well, where we tap into success stories and try and make people understand that you're not alone. Every single person does face a particular challenge where they find it very difficult to deal with. But um, there are support structures out there and there are ways to deal with it. And, and having this particular webinar, I think, is so pertinent because um, it brings out the fact, and I'm, and I'm going to say it, is, is to, to show other women that if somebody else in that particular role model um, has, has overcome something that very serious that they've gone through, so can you. And it's about enticing them into a positive space and, and, and enlightening them and encouraging them to say that, you know what, the situation you're facing is there. Yes, it is. And it could be dire, but um, it's not something that cannot be dealt with. Yes, nothing's um, un, uh, insurmountable. And we see that from just not uh, the, you know, the lineup that we have for the webinar. But even if we go back into our rich history, our Islamic tradition, you see these wonderful women figures standing out in different times of history. I mean, Bibi Khadija, radiallahu an, who was not only this wonderful, loving, supportive wife, but a strong businesswoman who had her own business and traded um, uh, even before she married the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, the youngest wife of the Prophet Sallallahu Bibi Aisha, you know, an icon in academia, I would say, you know, she remembered the most ahadith, she was consulted on many occasions after the demise of the Prophet Sallallahu and she was able to pull her strength through and 
and, and give the necessary advice, you know. Mm -hmm. And this is Muharram. Let us not forget uh, Bibi Zainab, the sister mm -hmm. of Imam Hussain, who, when we had lost all the martyrs, had to take over and lead the camp that was left. She was one of the prisoners of war, you know. So these are very, very strong uh, women uh, role models that we have. E even during the Khilafat of Hazrat Umar, mm -hmm. an, it was a woman who managed the marketplace. And not right. very many of us know these facts, you know, but we have such a lovely, rich history of powerful women, women in leadership, and we can only but follow the example. And coming closer to home, if you look at the 9th of uh, August, you know, it's a public holiday in our calendar, and it basically commemorates the march that took place in 1956, where women marched uh, to the union buildings, uh, uh, about 20,000 of them, and they were basically um, demanding, uh, amongst other things, a um, 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 wanting to do away with the past laws, etc. But right. among, yeah, among these were some very, very iconic women figures again. I mean, uh, leading uh, the Women's Federation at the time was Amina Kachalia, Lilian yes. Goy, Ray Simons, Helen Joseph. I mean, look at these wonderful, powerful women. So there's no reason for us to ever feel down. And if ever we do, we just need to look at these women and draw strength from them. And right. so we've lined up our very own current iconic uh, uh, women figures in South yeah. Africa. But, uh, for uh, this but before we go into the panelists, tell us quickly about yourself, because I think you're a phenomenal woman in your own right. Um, and uh, I, I think with you coming up with this idea has, has shown that there's definitely a definition and an idea going forward uh, to take what you have so selflessly and putting it into something that can help uplift and empower others. Well, I, I have a background in law. I'm a law graduate. I'm qualified as an attorney, you know, all of those things in life. But, you know, something in my life, at every time when I um, achieved something, I've always found that I've had to also experience some kind of personal hardship uh, together with that. And, mm -hmm. and I always felt, you know, to some extent that I had to earn whatever success I was going to get at the end of it because I had to go through these hardships. But I think going through hardships makes us better people, makes us stronger people. And I, I always say I'm going to wear my scars gracefully because um, that's what they are there for. It's... Um, part of my life's journey. And in um, pursuing um, the, the rights of women, especially from an Islamic perspective, I'm currently reading for my PhD. And something that really, really troubles me is um, how the non-recognition of marriages impacts on our Muslim community. And so my uh, PhD is a research on how we're going to regulate uh, Muslim divorces in the current Islamic context and in the current South African context. And so I would like to always do my bit um, to help whoever I can along the way. I just think that all these little um, bits of help that we provide to people along the way, along our life, sometimes we forget it, but um, sometime or the other, they, they come back to you and your payback is so great. Yes, uh, that's so true. You cannot even imagine, um, yeah. The rewards think, of just doing a little the, good. That's true. And I think the rewards and the fulfillment is, is, is something that, that makes you understand that you've changed even one person's life for the better. It's good enough. Um, and, and I think this is what it's about. So let's let's get into this. I'm very excited now. Let's get into the panelists. Give us a, a little bit of an uh, enticement into this webinar so we can get all our viewers and our listeners out there um, ready to get onto this webinar when it is happening. And, uh, you know, which is, I think, on the 28th of August. Yes, Saturday. Yes, OK, well, we have a lineup of four uh, very, very excellent dynamic women um, for the program on Saturday. Uh, the okay. first is okay. Faiz, sorry. Okay, so just give us a second. We're going to go into the panelists. We're just quickly going for an ad break and we'll be back and we'll carry on with that from there. Okay.
Durban, KwaZulu-Natal has been the hardest hit by the recent civil unrest. Hundreds of supermarkets, factories and warehouses have been looted and destroyed. Thousands have lost their jobs and are in need of food and household supplies. Penny Appeal South Africa is currently on the ground working with communities to provide essential items to those severely affected. Donate toward the Penny Appeal Hardship Fund today and assist us in caring for families for a three-month period with essentials and assistance to small businesses affected by the devastating effects of the unrest. Help us help our city. www.pennyappeal.org.za or call 031 11 Penny Appeal. Small change, big difference. What makes Randery Jewelers the optimum place for your memorable gift? Is it our range of exclusive, high-end, luxurious jewellery? Or is it our master craftsmanship of all your bespoke jewellery needs? We believe it's because at Randery Jewellers, we know just how to make your special moments last forever. Whether it's for a wedding, anniversary, or just a simple gift to show your love, trust Randery Jewellers to make it special. www.randeryjewellers.com Make your moments last forever with Randery Jewellers, the family name you can trust. Osman's Taj Mahal Spice and Rice. For over 80 years, Osman's Taj Mahal have been perfecting the art of the perfect blend of spices, pure, aromatic, and well-seasoned. Spices to tantalize your taste buds. From creative cuisines to gastronomical gourmet goodies. From exotic odors to traditional dishes, Osman's Taj Mahal have remained synonymous with quality spices and condiments. Taj Mahal rice, beans, and lentils. Try our range of chili bite mixes, rose and ilachi syrup, our quick and easy biryani pack, and our traditional range of spice blends. Osman's Taj Mahal. There is no substitute for quality. Africa. For your convenience, the Africa Muslims Agency's Durban office has moved to 797 Yansmats Highway, Sherwood, Durban. Our friendly staff are eagerly awaiting to receive, advise and share with you the current ongoing campaigns and projects that you have been supporting for the last 35 years. Visit us at 797 Yansmats Highway, Sherwood or call 031 031- 207-5676 Africa Muslims Agency Inspiring the spirit of giving Rejuvenating media day by day This is Salam Media Welcome back, and we have conversation with Munira Osman Haider. And before we left, we were actually going to get into the whole discussion on, on the types of panelists and what we can expect from this webinar. So entice us into it, Munira. Okay, well, like I said, we have this great lineup. Um, one of the speakers is uh, Faiza Suleiman. She is actually a social worker um, in terms of her profession but um, also a mother balancing various different aspects of life. And um, one of her great achievements is her master's degree, which she claims she got quite late in her life, but nevertheless uh, managed to get that. So she's going to basically share with us um, around that. Her master's um, was in a, on a very interesting area, basically mm-hmm. trained in brain working, recursive therapy and image therapy, developmental theory. So all of these things is, yeah, you know, great stuff. Um, And in her private practice that she actually runs, she um, focuses on various different aspects that would affect women. So premarital counseling, couples counseling, family counseling, and trauma counseling. So really she's at the cold face when it comes to some of the challenges that uh, women are actually um, Mm. facing. And she's not just... um, you know, focused on her career and profession. She's also a community person. Mm -hmm. She's the founder member of an organization called the Circle of Care Association, which is a women's group involved in a lot of community work. So Pfizer comes with a um, a rich experience in that particular context uh, in which she has um, actually become an expert, Mm -hmm. I would like to say. We have one of the speakers, a very, very young woman, And I am very, very proud to say that she was one of my students when she was uh, studying for her LLB. And that is Sakina Godwin. Yes. She's actually a young woman from uh, um, her her roots are Zimbabwe and Malawi, but she is in South Africa studying. And she has just completed her LLB degree last year from the University of KwaZulu-Natal. And... um, but besides just doing this LLB, so she's, she's at a very tender age in her life. 
but she's achieved so much. So the LLB is one um, achievement, but she works in the community. She's a mentor for the nonprofit organization called Community Media Trust, and they basically specialize in communication media and human rights um, in the uh, particular project, which is called the CIN Gobag Dreams Project. And in addition to that, she's a poet. So there's this soft side to her, you know, <laughs> and she has featured as a writer in the Bomangela poetry book. So, and more um, than that, she's um, the um, head at the moment, the chairperson of TIP, which is taking Islam to the people. And if people know a little bit about TIP, that is one of the organizations that founded uh, the Eatga for both women and men in Durban. So right. she's at the moment the chairperson of that at this very, very young and tender age. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm i sure you may have remembered this, Nafisa, a long time ago, uh, there was this movie, it was called Steel Magnolias. And the yes. title, yes, you know, didn't that title intrigue you? It intrigued me so much, you know? And I said, wow. This is such a beautiful way to actually describe women. Because when you think about flowers, the petals are so soft and breakable and delicate. But the minute you say steel, you're saying that they're, you know, they're soft and they're they're delicate and all of that, but they have this backbone, the strength mm -hmm. that takes them um, to different heights. Okay. Um, and then Another one of our speakers, quite a well-known person in the political community, is Fatima Choha. And she, as well, she's a mother, she's a wife. Um, her background is a lawyer, so she's an attorney by profession. But she spent some 23 years being a member of parliament. And uh, um, we know her for her position as the deputy uh, minister in the Department of Home Affairs. Yes. And currently, she's um, serving as the deputy chair in the South African Human Rights Commission. And uh, in all of my uh, sort of uh, communications and interactions with Fatima, I see this dynamism um, in her. And I thought that this is something that she could really, really share and she could inspire younger women towards. You know, I think lots of women... Um, aspire to being in political leadership, et cetera. And we were hoping that that's what Fatima uh, will bring to the table at the webinar. I really like the idea that you've created this balance in, 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 in this particular webinar because you've brought in a little bit of everything that, that, that a woman needs, those kind of tools to be able to equip them to, should we say, firstly, define their potentials, um, help them nurture it and grow it. And of course, also create those support structures out there to be able to create those very own powerful women from these particular ones where they can say, these are your strong points. These are your weaknesses. This is what you need to work on and, and help them move forward. So here we, we have a very well balanced, holistic person that's going out into the environment to be able to entice other people in a better way as well. Yes. Well, that was, was part of the objective of this webinar, that although we're a group of uh, lawyers and accountants, but life is about many different aspects as well. And so we wanted to, so, as you say, you know, give a very, very balanced outlook to whatever uh, goes on. And unfortunately, we would have wanted more from different backgrounds as well. But um, we were only able to get the ones that um, are available um, on Saturday. And of course, the other person that we have, again, another very, very dynamic somebody, uh, Mariam Kessem. Now, her background is a chartered accountant. So by profession, um, that's what she is. Again, she's a married lady. She has children. So we see that all of these people are balancing more than just their careers. It's, you know, as a female, you, you, you have to do a huge magic balancing act as far as I'm concerned. Um, mm -hmm. And I think lots of the time people don't really understand how much of, um, you know, a juggling act we have to really uh, perform. Anyway, Mariam is somebody who can really, really um, um, inspire women to get involved, not just as chartered accountants, but in business. 
she has done such great things, you know, besides being this chartered accountant. But I was so um, taken by what she had written to me about how she developed herself. She talks mm. about her dad's uh, factory, and that's where she got the idea of uh, being in business from, and then eventually opened up um, a business of her own, the Chester Foods, which is basically a sweets uh, company. But initially, it was merely just to sort of uh, import sweets and to sell them. But she has grown so much in this. But the one thing that really, really uh, touched me was she said that she played various different roles in developing this particular company. And at all given times, she ensured that she was in that role before handing it over to someone. So for I, I me, think, that's I, really empowering. I agree with you. And, and, and the thing is, like you say, it's having to experience it yourself first before you can hand it over to somebody else. That type of knowledge that you have, that valuable knowledge to be able to, um, should we say, entice a person um, into that positive space. Um, talk to us about this, webinar. Where do we get the details and interested parties? How do they actually register with you? Well, a flyer has been circulated. So for those who have not received the flyer, uh, the best way to actually register for the seminar is to email Amal, and I would share the uh, email address with you. Please sure. email info at amal, A-M-A-L, dot C-O dot Z-A. So once you um, drop a line to Amal, and just say that you want to register for the webinar on Saturday, then you will be provided with a link in order for you to join the seminar. It's going to be happening at 2.30 on Saturday, and we're hoping to co commence at 2.30 and terminate at around uh, 4 p.m. So for those who want to schedule that in their diaries, that's the time period uh, within which we will be hosting the webinar. Munira, um, will there be a fee? No, uh, the, it's, it's actually free, though there's no fee. <laughs> <laughs> I love that idea. It's not uh, um, because, um, you know, people are getting empowered uh, without having to pull out of the pocket, which no. is great because many people are in situations at the moment where they're looking for that help and can't afford to do so. So um, I'm actually blown away to see that, uh, you know, the people like yourselves that are in the positions of, should we say numbers and section 21 of whatever, whatever, I always call it that when I refer to lawyers, <laughs> to see um, that you've got the extra mile and, and, and thought of, of something as phenomenal as this, to be able to actually nurture, you know, the generations going forward who are actually our future. And of course, the people like ourselves that are in spaces and, and, and want to get the directions that we're in to be able to create a better quality of life for ourselves from a holistic level. And I think this is the aim of it. And, and, and I, I think it's absolutely phenomenal. So it's not just about the numbers and, as I said, the sections. Yeah, absolutely not. So it's not just all the accountants crunching away at their calculations <laughs> and us arguing um, the greatest lie ever. But yes, um, we, we definitely care. I think uh, it's so important that, um, you know, as a woman, you, you just have a very different side uh, to That's our nature. True. So, you, yeah, it, it just, uh, you know, Allah has created us, I think, with that. So, and um, I love your mindset. You know, I love your mindset because um, um, I, I think now and, and through this COVID-19 period, many women have realized that it's about building up and not breaking down. And this is what it's about. And, and I'm so glad that you're doing this because it's about creating that networking structure where we as women can come together and start building each other up with the types of potentials and should we say characteristics that we have to create a better environment and space throughout. And that's what it's about. Yeah, there's nothing more empowering than holding up another woman and, you know, actually putting them into the limelight. I just think that that in itself is so, so empowering. So may Allah, uh, you know, always give us the strength and the guidance to be able to do this and to help the community and to build the community, inshallah. 
Well, I'm blown away to see that uh, people like yourselves have actually, you know, taken your professions and defined a need in a, in a, in a different way, um, in a selfless way and in a humanitarian way to say that I'd like to help uh, other women out there, especially through the special women's month. So um, I want to wish you nothing but the best going forward with that webinar. And we want to thank you for joining us. What last message would you like to leave us with? Well, we'd like for you to join us as well if you are available. And thank you so much for having us here and to be able to talk about the webinar. Shukran. It's only a pleasure. Jazakallah so much for joining us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That is Mira Osman Hyder talking to us about, of course, the webinar taking place this Saturday with regard to the next generation. So do, do go, go ahead, join, and um, I think entice yourself into a better space. We're going to go for a quick break.